we're not just like powerful you know positive positive we, we don't know how to like meet the real aspects of life no we are tough and we are gritty if we have to get down and dirty we do it but the other, other point is we hold in the we're anchored in god so we're holding in the veil we're not floundering around we're using Hello, and thank you for joining me on I Am Maggie. So tonight I wanna, um, we're gonna still do our, the works of Florence Scovel Shin. We're gonna pick up where we left off. Uh, my videos tend to sort of track a few days behind when you actually see them posted. So right now it's August 11th on the East Coast. It's still August 10th, Thursday in Hawaii. It's a Thursday. And I just wanted to open up in our community because you are so special to me and you do mean so much to this world. And how I'm going to illustrate that is through stories, a very powerful story going on right now. And in fact, we know as a community, there are stories going on all over the world, worldwide. But that's why it is so important for you to lock into the God grid, to get yourself grounded in your purpose and what you are here to do. Because when you are doing that, you are adding to the power and the strength of the, of the ability for us and this earth to heal itself. We don't become part of the chaos. We become the order in the chaos. So what I wanted to share with you is I'm a little, I'm deeply sad two days ago. So why, that's why I'm saying about my videos sort of coming two, three days behind. Thank God for Benzi Darling. He always helps me to catch up. And as you can tell, my channel's growing and I'm learning a lot each day. It's not always perfect, but I'm getting there. So two days ago, on um, Lionsgate, August 8th, uh, the town of Lahaina, Maui went up in flames. Um, this is a really tiny, old Hawaiian town in Lahaina on Maui. Um, a lot of people may have gone to vacation there. You would often hear about Dr. Wayne Dyer talking about Lahaina a lot. Um, it's actually what drew me to Lahaina is different friends I've had over my childhood. If you don't know, I am part Hawaiian and I am also from Hawaii. So this, this going on in the Hawaiian Islands is deeply saddening for me, but it's also a time for us to lock and load in our tools. We can feel sad and we can feel all these things or we can actually ground, we can send positive energy, we can support the families energetically, and we can also send our financial support or whatever else is available through certain proper agencies. But the island of Maui, Lahaina, in, in, in the initial parts, they were saying there were 36 people missing. Now the death toll is up to 53. And I know from my friends and loved ones that there are still people missing and um, I remember before in my old um, workplace uh, one of my friends he was from Puerto Rico and I remember when the Puerto Rico got wiped out and we and him, me and him we prayed and prayed and prayed and it was weeks and his little son was missing in that and it was weeks before they found any of his family members so we want to have the greatest compassion, but we also want to ground down to hold for the greatest possibility in this situation. So they're saying it was um, catastrophic wildfires. There's also um, annotations that it was part of a hurricane, which would essentially, Maui would be ha the main island to be affected by this. But there has been major, major loss and the entire um, city of Lahaina has been engulfed in flames. Um, I want to just send, we're gonna pray after I talk about this, but I wanna send the most incredible strength, love, energy, healing to those firefighters and first responders. Let's just, let's actually just, just take a moment right now to 
sit and ground in our Creator, and we just open up this beautiful healing energy. And there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power, power in His name. And then we also have Pele, um, our Hawaiian goddess in the islands who's erupting on the island of Big Island. And we just have many of the, just we have support from all over the world and all over the universe and all over the spiritual realm. We want to just lift up each and every one of the residents on Maui, especially in Lahaina, for those who passed and those who are going to be dealing with the grief. We, we just lift up all the first responders, the nurses, the doctors, the military, and all the responding crews there. Many crews that are gonna be going over there. We're organizing efforts for water, for food, for clothing, for medicines, everything. We just lift this whole thing up. Now there is power in our group when we unite together for the positive purpose. Of course, you could use it for other purposes, but we are higher order values, healers, light workers. We are here for this. So we are just lifting up Maui. We are lifting up all the deceased and the ones here. We are lifting up every building, every animal, the many animals that died. Many people have been hurt in the efforts to help. We just lifting the whole situation up and we ask that out of this chaos comes order, healing, rebuilding, rebirth, restoration, and some of the greatest times ever to be seen on the island of Maui and in Lahaina and upcountry. And we just thank you, God, and we thank you, angels. We thank you, angels. We thank you, infinite spirit. We thank you all, and I thank you all so some of the things that you're going to be doing energy work around is we're going to be wanting to reduce people's pain, whether it's mental, emotional, or spiritual. We are going to be praying for the grounds, for the grounds to be healed and whatever the rebuilding process and restoration that it honors the people of Hawaii, that it doesn't just keep kicking the people of Hawaii out because that's what's happening over here since COVID so many, there are more Hawaiians living abroad than living in Hawaii now. So we want to have our indigenous people here. So we want to make that way. So we're going to put that in our little prayer here. We just ask for the people who are lost, that they be found and also that communication goes out to their family members. We ask that whatever is taken, that it be restored times 10, times 100, times 1,000, times a million. We pray for the facilities holding up the firemen, the hospitals, the farmers, um, the different freights that are bringing the supplies, the just everyday services that need to stay intact. Um, I know that they have talked about that there are still bodies in the water that have not been pulled for the, from the water. So I pray that the bodies that they bring out of the water are kept in honor and safety and that we're able to communicate to those families and just let the, all that is lost be found and supported and restored. And I want to tell you this out of every hardship we are learning this in my channel your life right? Um, why is my channel I am Maggie because a lot of my life I've been trying to be what other people want me to be and the person that I need to be is me, Maggie. So I am Maggie, but you are wonderful. You are amazing. You are beautiful. You are lovely and you are just love beyond measure. And so as I am Maggie, you are, we are one. So I want to give you this beautiful glimmer of light and love in this total burning down of Lahaina there was one <laughs> one old stone church Keana is old stone church that was in Lahaina that survived and this church is called Iho o Lehova Ona Kaua and it in Hawaiian is sacredness success of Jehovah the son of God so it is a beautiful church that is survived this incredible fire and winds and storms and death, destruction, despair. And it is still there as a beacon of light and hope 
for the future of Lahaina and where we are going. And there are just, it's not the only beacon, but it is, it's amazing that this one church survived. And I know as that church survived, there's so many beautiful people surviving. And so we want to send out our love and our light and our laughter and our joy and our healing to the people of Maui right now. Now, in a covering the Hawaiian Islands, in a secondary long running crisis on the island of Oahu, which is the, you know, Waikiki, at night when the palm trees are swaying. Though when you hear all those legendary songs about Waikiki and the Beach Boys and the magic of Waikiki, that's on the island of Oahu. And on the island of Oahu, we have a very real water crisis. There is a place called Red Hill and it used to be this beautiful Hawaiian valley of just over abundant fish and fruits and um, vegetation and lands and peoples. And we have had the Navy poisoning. It's our largest aquifer on the island of Oahu. And as they say with the aquifer, one cup, many straws. So there is a lot going on around Red Hill on Oahu where they are trying to cover up the serious health impacts, land impacts, ocean impacts, air impacts, everything that this comes when you put petroleum products, antifreeze, simple green, high dose chlorine, and all these other things that they put in our water. Our water was perfect and pristine and filtered through all these lava tubes and these natural God-given uh, ways to clean our water. And now we have all these problems with the water and it's being, that story is being suppressed. They are trying to silence people and not get, let people come forward, but many people are sick and it's too many to ignore. So on that sense, we want to pray for the people of Oahu. And I'm just gonna add the whole Hawaiian Islands in there because our Hawaiian Islands are beautiful and they deserve to be protected and they deserve to be restored and they deserve to have the Hawaiians in their homes and living here and doing, growing their taro and chanting their Hawaiian chants and dancing hula and everything else that is part of being Hawaiian and part of Hawaii. So I'm just going to hold that in prayer right now. As we just ground, we just ask God, we ask Pele, we ask all our ancestors. We thank you for our life and we thank you for our voice. And we thank you for everyone's life and voice. And we just ask that our words, our, act our actions, words, and deeds reflect you, Creator, in the most magnificent, wonderful ways. And we ask for supernatural assistance and healing in the Hawaiian Islands. Okay, so I want to thank you for hearing my heart on this because I know so many people, you don't have to be from Hawaii to love Hawaii. It's one of the most powerful places on the earth. When you talk about Sedona and vortexes, we have so much energy here. Tons of vertex, vortexes, the flow here with the mana is out of control. It's in the air, it's in the land, it's in the water. It's in the fire. It's in everything. It's in our little keiki and our, in our kapuna, it's in everything. And we want to protect and honor one of the beautiful jewels of the world that God put here. So in that, we're gonna continue to all lift up Hawaii. Now, we are gonna go back to the complete works of Florence Scoville Shin. And I wanna thank you so much for your continued prayers for Hawaii. Maui, Oahu, the Big Island, Kauai, Lanai, Molokai, all, all of Lanai, Molokai, Niihau, all of our islands. Just 
pray for us. A lot of wonderful people out here. And in the future, when I have events, they're going to be here in the Hawaiian Islands. So thank you for supporting my channel because we are working our way to that. All right, so we're gonna hit up denials and affirmations. Thou shall also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. So we at our channel, which is I am whoever you are, and I am Maggie, you are who, we are one. We are decreeing tonight that Maui shall be restored and better than ever, and that Oahu's water will be restored and cleaned and better than ever, and that the truth and the things needed to be exposed will be to help the people of Hawaii and that Hawaiians will get their land too. So all the good that is to be made manifest in man's life is already an accomplished fact in the divine mind. And that's what we just did. We are, we're not just like powerful, you know, positive, positive. We, we don't know how to like meet the real aspects of life. No, we are tough and we are gritty. If we have to get down and dirty, we do it. But the other, other point is we hold in the, we're anchored in God, so we're holding in the veil. We're not floundering around. We are using our power for good. So all the good that is to be made manifest in man's and woman's life is already an accomplished fact in the divine mind. That's where we just established it. And is released through man's recognition, which we recognize, we're claiming this now, or the spoken word. Boom, we spoke the word from Maui and Oahu and the Hawaiian Islands. And so he must be careful to decree that only the divine idea be made manifest for often, he or she decrees through the idle words, <laughs> failure or misfortune. So canceling out failure and misfortune. Now, one thing I just love, 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 whew, Reverend Ike. And Reverend Ike was fire. <laughs> and he would just be like, right here, right now, we are decreeing that Maui and Oahu is restored, healed, healthy, whole, complete. And we are holding that in the divine mind and in our spoken word. We, he didn't play around. Reverend Ike didn't wait. He knew that the moment was now and he took the moment and he encouraged each of us in each moment of now to get riled up for our good. So let's do this. So it is therefore of the utmost importance to one's word demands correctly as stated in the previous chapter. So we are in denials and affirmations. This is like coming where we've completed a chunk of the book and this is a part of it. So anyway, if one desires a home, So I am making the divine selection now for a prosperous YouTube channel, for Maui to be restored, for Oahu's water to be clean and restored, for my new home, for my classes to sell and my book to sell and for your book to sell and for your children to be healthy and all of our children, we're all one. So what I wish for me, I'm wishing for you. So for example, here we go. Infinite spirit, open the way for my right home my right friends, my right position. I give thanks. It is now manifest under the grace in a perfect way. Woo -hoo! Right here, right now. Okay, ready? Let's do it again. You know what it, whatever it is, put your hand on your head, put your hand on your shoulder, put your finger on your, whatever. Take your power and do something with this. I'm putting my hand out. Here we go. Infinite spirit, open the way for my right home, my right friend, my right position. I give thanks. It is now manifest under grace and in a perfect way. My right water, my right restoration of Lahaina Maui, etc., etc. My healing, your healing, etc. So the latter part of this statement is most important. For example, okay, what do you, can you feel it? Story. Every one of these stories, if you are honest, will hit home. Either you're gonna laugh at yourself, you're gonna laugh at your kids, you're gonna laugh at your friend, you're gonna laugh at your neighbor, you're gonna laugh at someone because every one of these stories hits home. So here we go, story. 
<laughs> I knew a woman who demanded, I demand a thousand dollars. Give me a thousand dollars. Her daughter was injured and they received a thousand dollars indemnity. So it did not come in the perfect way. Are you catching this? Her daughter had to be injured to get that money. No, aole, we don't want it that way. It did not come the perfect way. The demand should have been worked in this way. Okay, come on, get on up, get on up. Okay, ready? Hand out, finger on, whatever it is, bless yourself, but here we go. Infinite spirit, I give thanks that the $1,000, which is mine by divine right, is now released and reaches me under grace and in a perfect way. Woo! Okay, I could hear you speaking back, so let's do it again. Ready? Okay, I get excited, but God is not boring. God is exciting, also very peaceful and calming, but right, I'm just feeling the power. Okay, here we go. Point your finger, bless your head, put your hand out, whatever it is, speak these words. Infinite Spirit, I give thanks that the $1,000, which is mine by divine right, is now released and reaches me under grace in a perfect way. Can't you feel the power being released from your hands and from your heart and from your mind? Align. Woo! The world can't go wrong when we're in it. Okay, so here we go. As one grows in financial consciousness, he or she should demand that enormous sums of money, which are his or her by divine right, reach him or her by grace and in perfect ways. Oh gosh, I love that. Okay, so sometimes people do this thing with money, like, oh no, I don't want to have money because I'm somehow so righteous if I'm poor. Hey, if you're trying to get on the freeway, can you get on a, a freeway where the on-ramps are blocked or blown up or whatever? No, you need streets that go on nicely to the freeway. And you know that freeway that collapsed recently? You need a freeway that's standing up and it's strong and sturdy, sturdy and it's gonna go the distance. So you need on-ramps and off-ramps to get on and off the freeway. It is the same thing with abundance. You are a child of God. So if God is going to do his great work on this planet, how is he gonna do it if you're poor? He needs you to be the pure heart that you are channeling those monies to wherever God wants it. For instance, right now, all of us, large sums of moneyers, we could be sending millions of dollars to help restore Maui or to help Oahu or to help Haiti or to help Ukraine or whatever, wherever, wherever it is. We could be putting tons into our own children's schools, making sure that they're fed cared for and getting proper education there's so much that you can do if you have but it with great power becomes great responsibility so we are calling in those large sums of money and we are holding our pure hearts to do the right thing so i'm saying this again now brian scott has the most incredible affirmation for large sums of money you have got to go look up his his um his, he has tons, so he has a whole conference on it. Reality Con 3 was off the charts. Okay, you gotta check that out. Um, you gotta look up all his large sums of money meditations. It's not about being like, I'm gonna have it on and I'm gonna like be selfish. No, it is about I'm gonna have it on and I'm gonna do more. Because with great power comes great responsibility and every single one of you has power and has gifts and has something to do on this planet. So you gotta stop thinking weak, poor thoughts or weak, low money thoughts. You gotta start thinking to be and do and have all you can to glorify God. So let's do this again with vigor. As one grows in financial consciousness, he or she should demand 
that the enormous sum of money which are his or her by divine right reach him or her under grace and in perfect ways. So it is possible for man to release more than he thinks is possible. For one is bound by the limited exper expectancies of the subconscious. So you gotta break those limited expectancies. And sometimes that's gonna take, you know, a lot of people understand the work it takes to build a nice body, to like to get that, you know, six pack, eight pack, 12 pack, or to have a nice, nice arms and toned back or whatever. But when it comes to doing their energy work, all of a sudden they're like, I don't know why I can't manifest or materialize this. Focus on it like you're focusing, trying to get go out with that guy or girl. Focus on it like you're trying to focus on getting that eight pack, 12 pack, six pack, whatever. You know you're gonna have to cut back on the sugar. You're gonna have to cut back on the alcohol. You're gonna have to exercise. You're gonna have to do, and exercise physiology has changed. You wanna know your body. You wanna know what makes you lose, what makes you pull down the weight, what works, what doesn't work, right? The negativity don't work. But the thing is you have that awareness if you want your body to look a certain way, but all of a sudden when it comes to practicing your spiritual um, tools and pointers, we act like we're helpless. Oh, I can't do this. You can do this, you will do this, and you need to do this because the world needs you right now. So it is impossible for man to release more than he thinks he's, is possible. So you gotta start knowing all things are possible because they are. And watch what we're gonna do in Maui and Oahu and the whole Hawaiian Islands. You guys are gonna bring power and healing here. For one is bound by the limited expectancies of the subconscious, so let's expect big things. He must enlarge, he or her must enlarge his or her expectancies in order to receive in a larger way. So what? If you expect a little, you're going to get a little. If you expect a lot, you're going to get a lot. But like Reverend Ike, oh, I love you, Reverend Ike. He had this, he talked about when God gives us something, though, God's going to give us something knowing he can trust us. So he says, can God trust you with, like, you got to know how you, you can trust you. So if you get that big sum of money, are you going to go and use it on alcohol, drugs, or a running fast life? Or are you going to go out? and help people build educational systems so that they can like, um, oh my gosh. Oh, he used to say, um, Martin Luther King, if you give a man a fish, you feed him a day, but you teach him to fish and he can feed himself and his family for life. We want to take our money and we want to be building things that give back and keep returning with more and more educational systems that actually help our kids be independent, feeling confident, feeling good, or opportunities. Like I've never been to Italy. I cannot wait to go to Italy. I know Italy is in here. I can't wait to go to Greece. Never been there. Can't wait to go to Japan. Can't wait to go to China. I am going to be going. I can't wait to go to India, there are things that I want to do in my life that I will do, but I haven't had these opportunities, but I have big expectancy. So I know these things are going to be happening with, for me and with me. And I know I'm going to be with some of the most wonderful people when I do it. I want to go to Egypt with Billy Carson. Yeah, Billy Carson and Elizabeth, that's going to be happening. So, you know, open up those expectancies, watch what happens. You know, you already know what the old thinking does drop the old thinking right here and right now let's be new let's be new in christ let's believe in the new man so whoa. man so often limits himself in his or her demands for example for example story stories man i'm gonna tell you they're gonna start sticking to you like in the best way like a form-fitting beautiful dress or suit you know when you see a man and slicked up in a like clean fresh smelling good you're like ooh, attention hello sir oh you see a woman she's got her hair done she's smelling good she's in a beautiful dress or in a slack outfit or whatever and you're like whoo attention you're like wow what a beautiful beautiful person god created and how i would love to know this person we are all beautiful in different ways. So we need to start blooming in the garden that God made us. We are Eden itself. So man so often limits himself to in his demands. For example, story, boop, here we go. A student made the demand for $600 by a certain date. I want $600 by this date. 
He did receive it, but heard afterwards that he came very near to receiving a thousand dollars, but he was just given six hundred as the result of his spoken word. So we're going to start. We, you don't have to like feel like you have to be positive all the time. But like I said, if you want to have that nice body, you're going to start training yourself. You're going to do the sit-ups. You're going to drink the water. You're going to eat that diet. You're going to cut out the alcohol, the sugar, blah, and you're going to get it. What's going to happen is the same thing with our spiritual tools. When you want to start speaking the word of poop, you ain't because you're going to say, whoa, I am God and I have the power in my tongue to change the temperature in this room. So I will use the spoken word that God gave me to do great things. And just like that, your spiritual abs be tight and right. You be looking good. So they limited the Holy One of Israel. Wealth is a matter of consciousness. Hear this again. Wealth is a matter of consciousness. You know, Louise Hay used to have a beautiful thing. She would talk about when you think about your money or when you think you're about your abundance. She said, I want you to envision something. So you're, everybody's envisioning things. And man, this thing hit me like, boom, wow. I saw myself with like a cup or a bucket, but she's like, do you have a symbol? And that symbol is like that little tiny thing that they use. It's like um, for sewing when you protect your finger. I'm like, what the hell? Wow, I haven't thought about that in a million years. No, I wouldn't have no small thimble. Then it was like, do you have a spoon? And I thought, like, no way, I ain't, my abundance ain't a, ain't a spoon. I have a cup. I felt so proud. Oh yeah, I got a cup. But then she went on to say, well, is your abundance a bucket? And I thought, oh, I didn't think about that. I mean, I, instead of a, a cup, I could have like a, a bucket of abundance. Yeah, I'd rather have that. And then she says, what about, is it a lake? I thought, whoa, that's right. And I'm in Hawaii. We're surrounded by ocean. She says, is it, is it a pool? Is it an affinity pool? Is it an ocean? Right there. Kaboom. God stepped in the room. Wow. My abundance consciousness went whoo, through the roof. I was like, what am I thinking? So like she says, Florence says, do not limit the Holy One of Israel. Wealth is a matter of consciousness. The French have a legend giving an example of this. Okay, the French, the French <laughs> have a legend of giving an example of this. A postori! None of these stories, they're going to start sticking to us like post-its that are not toxic. Okay, a poor man was walking along a road, walking along a road, when he met a traveler who stopped him and said, Stop! My good friend, I see you are poor. Take this golden nugget, sell it, and you will be rich all your days. Hmm. The man was overjoyed. Yay, 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 party! The man was overjoyed at his good fortune and took the nugget home. He immediately found work and became so prosperous that he did not sell the nugget. Okay, so what happened here though? Because he had it, he felt rich, right? Okay, so, but I, I don't know. Let's go. Years passed and he became a very rich man. One day he met a poor man on the road. What do you think he did? He stopped him and said, my good friend, I will give you this golden nugget, which if you sell will make you rich for life. Ooh la la. And the merchant took the nugget, had it valued, and found it was only brass 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 monkey okay so it's not it's not gold it's brass so we see the first man became rich through feeling rich thinking the nugget was gold every man okay so think about this joseph murphy louise hey wayne dyer neville goddard Joseph Murphy, we all know the feeling is one of the big secrets. Okay, if you don't have the other part, then the feeling's a secret. But if you got the feeling and you get the other part, you got it. The feeling is the secret. So the first man became rich because he, what? He got that. 
this brass monkey, which was actually in his a fool's gold, but it made him feel prosperous, and because of that, he prospered. So every man, here comes Florence, is tied up in a bow. Every man has within himself a gold nugget. Every woman has within herself a gold nugget. It is his or her consciousness of gold, of opulence, which brings riches into their life. In making his or her demands, they begin at their journey's end. And that is, they declare they have already received. Before ye call, I shall answer. Ooh. Oh, that is amazing. Okay, I am going to read that for you one more time because uh, that send shivers up my spine in the most positive way. Are you ready? Are you ready to rumble with abundance and healing and opulence? Here we go. Every man or woman has within them a golden nugget. Okay, so picture that right now. Picture it. Picture your golden nugget. Okay, now I want you to feel it. And it is in their consciousness of gold and of opulence, which brings riches into your life. In making your demands, you begin at your journey's end. The gold nugget. And that is, you declare that you have already received it. Before ye call, I shall answer. So we serve an absolutely amazing God who is always taking care of us if we are open in our consciousness and our hearts and minds aligned. So I want to thank every one of you for keeping Hawaii, Maui, Hawaii, Oahu in your prayers. And I want to just bless, may all your consciousness open up to the highest level of abundance. May your golden nuggets be revealed to you. May your consciousness for yourself and the ones you love of golden opulence be expanded. And may you begin from the end that you are already wealthy beyond measure in every way health wealth and love because wealth health is one of the greatest wealth you will ever have having your health is so important so health wealth and love to you all i want to thank you so much for supporting me on my channel as you know i am maggie please subscribe and like and leave your positive comments i would love to know um your thoughts Maybe what tool might have sat with you or what you were using in your life. What, what kind of like conscious expansiveness are you calling in for your abundance, your opulence, your health, whatever. I would love to know because I just want to celebrate with you all the great things that are coming your way. And so until next time, may you all be in peace. May you all be in peace and at peace.